it is a very clear night, uh, almost moonless because moon will rise around midnight. And I'm looking at the M109, Messier 109, 109. Uh, that's the uh, galaxy near the Fekat in the Ursa Major. This is the star Gamma Ursa Major as we are looking at, and that's the near to M109. So I will explain how to find it. The, you put the Fekat, the brightest star, out of the field of view, and slightly to the turn the telescope slightly to the um, yeah. I think when when on a map it actually we will lower uh, left translated into the, what is in the sky and then you will see this probably I should say that uh, toward the uh, south slightly and then you'll see this is an oval shape um, um, yeah oval spherical round to oval shaped and there is one brightest star near it and uh, then in the lower part of the around five o'clock of it you see another patch of nebulosity kind of uh, object let me use the barlow on this and see what can i discern okay i'm now using the 2x barlow two times barlow is a moonfish barlow very good quality very cheap actually is it uh, i'm using it with the max vision 24 millimeter 82 degrees eyepiece and uh, what i can see is that uh, the galaxy m109 which is near the gamma ursa major that's fecat the name of it uh, is quite visible easy to see and uh, it really good well answers to the borrowing so when i have now borrowed i can see that the patch of uh, nebulosity to the five o'clock of it is actually another star. Maybe there is a little uh, superposed on the background of a uh, nebulosity as a spiral arm or something. And um, but that is part of a asterism of a triangle, right angle triangle, which uh, the cent uh, the uh, the side of it passes through the axis of this galaxy if I imagine it and that uh, other star that I mentioned is around one o'clock or two o'clock of the galaxy uh, is a brighter one but the two other are now visible when I use the parlor. It shows clear view I can see barely some structure in that galaxy also it's oval it's kind of like a spiral oval Now I'm looking at the NGC 3953. Uh, it's quite bright. Um, it's easier actually to see than the M Messier 109, in my opinion, uh, in my view. Unless I'm looking at something really different than that. It's quite bright. I can see a very bright core and a long, a large halo with a spiral. I can see that. Uh, Halo is almost like a smaller version of a of the M81, uh, a little bit more also uh, rounder than that. Beautiful, quite beautiful actually. Easy to see, just south of the Fekat Gamma Ursa Majoris, and close to the Messier 109. No, I'm using Teleview Eaters 21 millimeter, and the field of view. I've removed the Barlow, and the field of view is full of galaxies and tiny stars, as if I'm looking through the Milky Way, and so many galaxies also visible, more than what of my eye and mind can actually perceive. All of that, I can clearly see M109, can see that NGC one, and. Uh, 3953 I think it was and 
beyond that, I can see more smaller ones. It's a group of galaxies in that region. It's not just these two. It's amazing. The view is so good. Okay, I'm now in and I'm looking at the Intel Interstellarium Deep Sky Guide and that's a desk edition by Roald Stoyan and Ove Clown or Clown. In the 12, uh, these charts which are related to the page 12 in this book version of it, this is the actual charts. So 12 is this, also major. And we were looking for galaxy groups of the M109. So NGC 3953 around it is right. Uh, there is another galaxy. NGC 3917. So this is the photograph of the M Messier 109 or M109. And this is the related drawing of this galaxy however I look for the NGC 3953 which is this one NGC 3953 there is no photograph of it here however in the NGC Atlas photographic uh, guide to observation by the Olivier Godal, which is a really lovely book. You can see NGC 3953 is recorded as a galaxy of magnitude 10.2 and uh, is it makes a duo double um, galaxy with the 3917. And this is the chart again. I'm showing you the chart. NGC 3953 and M109 and makes a duo with the N uh, 3917 NGC 3917 and we can see NGC uh, 3953 here in this book so having one source is not good you have to have multiple sources and yet we can see the NGC 3992 which is M109 here, Messier 109 and if I if refer to the Night Sky Observer's Guide Volume 2 Spring and Summer by the George Robert Kep Keppel and Glenn W. Summer and you come to this page you can see a, a description of the a photograph of the Messier 109 which is NGC 3992 and then we can find a good description on the, how it will look in the different size telescopes. So it's 8 to 10 inch telescopes, 10 100 magnification. Uh, this is how it will look. And the triangle is mentioned here. I first uh, observed it, then I'm now seeing it in this book. And 12 inch telescope is not mentioned, but 16 and 18 it shows more uh, details visible. NGC, uh, the other member of this is this NGC 3953, is a bright galaxy, which I was right. It has a pro prominent core nucleus, and I told mentioned that. And that's the NGC 3953, 8 to 10 inch with telescopes, and how it will look. Uh, in the bigger telescopes so again it's good to have different sources otherwise you will miss some vital information and sometimes it, wikipedia and such places don't have that now we go for the star charts or supernova star charts finders so and this is the messier 109 NGC 13992 and these are the field stars you can see in this galaxy 
So if you want to look for uh, supernova, this book source I have is very rare. I have not seen it. And this is all the copy I have uh, seen and I got about it immediately. It was owned by the uh, former president of uh, BAA, um, Morris, or Gavin Morris. And uh, the, now I have it. And that's the NGC 3992. And this is the NGC uh, 393893. Uh, do I have 3953? Yeah, that's the NGC 3953 we were looking at. So, there's a small bright nucleus, as I mentioned. And this is all the stars, field the stars you can see in this galaxy. So they're really faint, you know, you maybe magnitude 15 or something. But when you know this chart and these stars, these are foreground stars in our, in our own galaxy, you will know that if there is any other star, uh, they, they are supernova. Uh, so I'm showing you this thing so my video will be thorough in the sense that you will have all the information that you need. Uh, as a last uh, resource, this is more popular source I'm uh, going for. This is the, the, the book by the Dorling Industry called The Stars, The Definitive Visual Guide to the Cosmos. And in the constellation, uh, you're so major, you can see the um, beautifully uh, shown the Messier 109 near the Gamma called fact it's, it's written wrong it's a mistake but anyway and it shows the distance to the stars so and uh, that information nice information it's it, it, what i want to say is that practically you need multiple sources of information you cannot rely on only on one source or on the internet or whatever you see in forums you have to have multiple sources